Welcome to St. Peter's Church from the Cox family. Welcome, Welcome everybody, everybody to, to St. Peter's. Peter's. Hello, we're, we're the Olmstons. Hello, Mr. I'm Tom. I'm Esther. And this is Beatrice. Welcome, Welcome to St. Peter's. Welcome to St. Peter's from the Treverton family. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning worship at uh, St. Peter's Church. And all thank you to all those who gave their welcomes just now. And um, we're looking a bit different today, just a bit of a different feel for the service this morning. Um, we're going to be joined later on by Annabelle and by Martha. But uh, for this beginning part of the service, um, it's just me today welcoming you from this nice little room that we've got uh, above the porch at St. Peter's. We're going to be carrying on thinking about the character of Nehemiah and what we can learn about how he uh, prayerfully under God helped his people to rebuild uh, their lives following catastrophe and learning what we can uh, learn from in our lives. Uh, Nehemiah today is going to be responding to issues of justice and poverty in his community. And Annabelle's going to be helping us think through what that might mean for us. Let's pray together and then we're going to um, worship together as we sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather together across Aundel, across the wider um, community, uh, from far afield. We can join together as St. Peter's Church family and worship you this morning. Lord, as we sing, as we uh, read scripture, as we reflect on it, as we pray in all these different ways, may we know you very specially present with us today. Wherever we are, may we also feel that we are together as a community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's worship together as we sing, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let's worship together.
Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it to a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Till each appear before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts. Than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk in blamelessness. Lord, Lord Almighty, Almighty, blessed is the, the one, one who, who trusts in you. you. Thank you to Nadine and Louise for reading um, our psalm for us. Well, as always, it's good as we gather together as um, our church family to reflect on those ways in which we haven't loved God with a whole heart, soul, mind and strength. Those ways we haven't loved others as God calls us to. And then to confess our um, wrongdoing to God, asking his forgiveness, uh, resolving to live differently. And God promises his forgiveness to us. So just a moment of quiet as you perhaps bring to mind those things that you want to tell God about over these past few days. And then when I say, Father, I invite you to respond. Forgive us. Father, for those times when we have taken your love for granted. And for those times when we fail to tell others of your love. Father, forgive us. Jesus, for those times we've not followed your teaching. For those times we've not shared your love with others or sought to make disciples. Jesus, forgive us. Holy Spirit, for those times we have grieved you by our thoughts, our words, our actions. For those times we've resisted your prompting for change in us. Spirit, forgive us. As we turn to God in sorrow for our sins, God the Father forgives us through Jesus' work on the cross. And he heals us through the work of his Holy Spirit. And so let's firmly resolve, therefore, to walk the way of Jesus this day and always. Amen. We're going to have our next Bible reading now, and Joe is going to read that for us. And after that, Martha's going to lead us in some creative worship. Nehemiah 5, 1 to 19. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Some were saying, we have our sons and daughters are numerous in order, order for us to eat and stay alive. We must get grain. Others are saying we are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying we had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. Although we are the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because, of our, because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging our own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, as far as possible, we have brought back fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. 
they kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. So I continued, what, are you, what you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile en enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain, but let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves and houses, and also the interest. You are charging them 1% of the money, grain, new wine and olive oil. We will give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, in this way, may God shake out their house and possessions, anyone who does not keep this promise. So may such a person be shaken out and emptied. At this, the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the twentieth year of King Artatax, when I was appointed their governor in the land of Judea, until his thirty-second year, twelve years, Neither nor my brothers ate food allotted to the governor, but the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shekels of silver from them in addition to the food and wine. Their assistants also lorded it over the people, but out of the reverence of God, I did not act like that. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on this wall. All my men were assembled there for the work. We did not acquire any land. Furthermore, 150 Jews and officials ate at my table, as well as those who came from us from the surrounding nations. Each day, one ox, six choice sheep and some poultry were prepared for me, and every ten days an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. In spite of all this, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor, because the demands were heavy on these people. Remember me with favour, my God, for all I have done for these people. We're now entering a time of creative worship, a time to reflect on the theme for today. And today we are thinking about helping those in poverty, helping those less fortunate than perhaps we are. And maybe there are people that you know who you feel God is calling you to help today. Maybe that's through a charity or organisation, or maybe it's people that you know personally. How about if you would like to take a piece of paper and write the names of those people or those charities that you would like to help? Maybe you want to draw a heart around those names as a symbol of God showing his love to them and us showing God's love to them through helping them. So we're going to hear a song that is going to help us to think about going out and serving God. And as we listen to that, think about those who you could be helping this week.
have shown us what you require. Freely we've received now, freely we will give. We must go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the from just singing move us into action we must go fill us up and send us out fill us up and send us out fill us up send us out Lord. fill us up and send us out Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us. So today we're going to reflect on Nehemiah chapter 5 and let's just recap first to remind ourselves of where we've got to in this story of Nehemiah. First we reflected earlier on that Nehemiah recognised that the Jews were in great trouble and so he prayed to a great God. Nehemiah then took action and galvanised the people of Judah to work together to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And last week we explored that they faced opposition to this rebuilding and threats from neighbouring people. And so they then had to divide their time between manpower building the walls and standing guard with their weapons. And today we come to chapter 5 where Nehemiah faces a new challenge as well as the threat from outside. Today we find out about a threat from within their own community. So what was this urgent matter that led Nehemiah to drop everything else? Well, the threat was that there was dire poverty caused in part by injustice within the community itself. Poverty, this year for many, has been a challenge. 
We've seen and heard reports of injustices as to how different people's lifestyles have been affected by the pandemic. And as we begin to rebuild our lives, it's important to look beyond ourselves and respond to the needs of others in our community. To find ways, as our vision says, to give God's love away to others. So let's explore a little bit more of what that might mean through this chapter in Nehemiah. First, Nehemiah identifies the causes of poverty and poverty and its causes can be complex and varied. There's not a single cause of poverty, but usually multiple causes that amplify one another. In this passage, there are two causes that are identified. The first is natural calamity. In this case, it was a famine which had probably caused a drought, which meant that the crops hadn't grown properly and so there was very limited food. Um, as a result of the food being limited, the prices rose and therefore there were a number of people in the time of Nehemiah that could not afford to buy enough food because they didn't have that much money. If they'd been farmers, they wouldn't have earned as much and yet they still had lots in their family to feed. Covid, our natural calamity of this past year, has caused us as a nation to find that shops were running out of things. Who remembers the battle for toilet rolls? The extortionate price for sanitizer at the start of the pandemic? The rise in prices of imported food? All those have meant that even in our own community, there will be some who are struggling with poverty at the moment. And also the increase in taxes has caused significant financial pressure to those in the time of Nehemiah. And I wonder, what do you do when you have no money and are facing starvation if you can't get any money? Well, for many, we try and borrow money, and that was no different in the times of Nehemiah. But here comes the second injustice. The second cause of poverty is that the way people gained money was being um, raised on by the rich. Because people couldn't afford the rise in prices, they took out loans. And those who were selling the loans saw this as a way of earning some extra money for themselves. So they started charging interest. And Nehemiah challenges and says, let's abandon this exacting of interest. It's generally understood that the prohibition against charging interest applied only to situations of basic necessity, not to what we would classify as business loans. So it would be wrong to charge to someone to buy food but not to buy another pair of oxen in the time of Nehemiah to increase your business. The second injustice above charging interest was that people had started seizing the mortgaged fields and vineyards and homes, which had the effect of depriving these people of the only source of income that they had. With their source of income cut off, they had only one remaining option, and that was to sell themselves or their children into slavery. Lending money in the Old Testament times under God's law was governed by laws to ensure that the borrower was treated with respect, justice and kindness. And the people Nehemiah rebukes here have obviously been disadvantaging the community in order to enrich themselves. They've been breaking the laws of God they are guilty of an injustice. What about our time? What's been the effect of COVID-19 on personal and household debt today? Well, some recent research notes that 18 million people have taken out some kind of debt to cope financially last year. Six million UK adults fell behind on at, last, at least one household bill during the COVID pandemic. 
and 60% of families on universal credit and child tax credits have been forced to borrow money since the start of the crisis. And you might just think, well, that's globally and locally. We don't have those issues, do we, in Aundel? Well, talking with Janet, the head teacher of Aundel Primary School this week, the effect of COVID poverty is closer to home than we might think. Janet notes that there's been a significant increase in the use of the food bank by families at OPS. There's the reduction in income due to job loss or flexi furloughing has resulted in really unreliable income in many families. There's been an increase in children coming to school with inadequate amounts of food in their lunchbox and an increase in the number of children entitled to free school meals. The issues facing some of the Jews in Nehemiah's time are issues that we face in our community. There is poverty. So what can the church's response be to this poverty? What would Nehemiah have them do to right these wrongs? Well, this brings up the bigger question of what God requires us to do in the effort of addressing poverty and pursuing justice. What does it mean to act justly in addressing poverty? Well, that's a huge topic, topic and we can't cover it all today. But I want to identify through this passage maybe some principles and then some definite actions we could think about taking. First, there is the principle of equity. Many have pointed out in the Bible that we require equity and not equality, and they're different. Equality means that everyone has equal resources. Equity means that everyone has equal opportunity. The fact is that there will always be inequalities in the amount of money that different people have. And so therefore, as Christians, our efforts should be aimed at equity, not necessarily equality. That's why Nehemiah insists on returning the fields and the vineyards and the olive orchards and the houses to the poor. Having access to these will allow them the opportunity to work their way out of severe poverty. I wonder what we can be doing to ensure that all families and all people in Aundel have equal opportunities in life. And then there's the second principle that's exercised here of proximity. That's the priority given to helping people near us. In Nehemiah's time, his concern about this poverty was because actually it was fellow Jews who were struggling with poverty. Proximity means that the closer the need, the greater the responsibility we have to address it. And I don't just mean proximity geographically, it can also mean relationally. It's clear in our text that Nehemiah gave priority to helping fellow Jews. He saw the lack of doing so as a threat to the glory of God because it would mean and lead to taunts from other nations. We are called to make sure that the basic needs of those within our church family and our local community are met first before giving further afield. So there's the principle of equity, the principle of proximity. And finally, there's the principle about acting justly is that it must be a priority for us. Nehemiah saw it as a higher priority than even building the wall and he stopped building the wall to deal with it. Matthew Henry in his commentary points this out, that even if Jerusalem's walls were ever so high, so thick, so strong, the city would not be safe until such abuses as poverty were not tolerated any longer. So how do we begin to address poverty? Well, I want to suggest it's by choosing generosity. 
one of the challenges in addressing poverty is that it almost always requires those with resources to give away some of those to others. It requires choosing generosity. In the last paragraph of our chapter in Nehemiah, he tells us of his personal practice regarding this. He's the governor. He has the right to collect taxes from other people to give him money to provide for the needs of his staff. And although former governors had done that, Nehemiah decided not to collect these taxes. And that meant that he was going to have to pay out of his own personal earnings for his staff. Out of his own pocket, he chose to pay for the food of his 150 staff, plus various other dignitaries and diplomats from other regions who had to be housed and fed. Obviously, Nehemiah must have been a wealthy man, but he was a wealthy man who was willing to be made less wealthy to a significant degree by the needs of others. He chose generosity. He chose to give out of what he'd got. And what motivated him to do this? Well, I think we get an answer in verse 15. It was the fear of the Lord. He took seriously, you see, everything that God said. God's word meant something to Nehemiah. He must have been aware of passages like Proverbs 14, verse 31, that says this, Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honours him. Or perhaps he was also aware of verses earlier in the chapter that say, Blessed is he who is generous to the poor. Nehemiah is reflecting that biblical principle throughout the Bible, the principle that God does reward faithful generosity. God knows how to bring good for us. Many times the good he brings to those who are generous is not more money, but blessings far better than that. He brings blessings of joy in giving, gratitude, contentment, rich relationships. God is a generous God. He's given us so much. We need to learn to be generous givers. So what about us? What about us here in 2021 in Oundle? I'm sure you've noticed some of the parallels to our current situation. The Jews under Nehemiah needed to stand together and support one another in the face of their crisis, instead of looking to their own interests. There's an article recently from Christians Against Poverty in their annual report for this year, and it says this. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted each of our lives in a significant way. Yet, sadly, many have experienced disproportionate levels of hardship. Looking back to last year's report, we knew that people in debt were struggling on a low income going without food, experiencing poor mental health and feeling isolated. For years, people have become indebted due to job loss, bereavement or relationship breakdown. For many in our society, the COVID-19 pandemic did not create completely new financial problems, but simply exacerbated existing ones. The debt advice industry is anticipating rising numbers in needing debt advice. More must be done to reach and help households who are struggling. And we all have a story to tell. We all have a part to play. And this is where you come in. Joined up working is needed more than ever, forming partnerships to combat financial fallout of the pandemic. Yet we cannot forget that even before COVID-19, households were struggling and without change, people will still struggle in the future unless we do something about it. Quite challenging words, aren't they? It's all too easy, isn't it, to retreat into our comfortable, protected bubbles, to do the minimum, 
to be grateful that God has provided for us. But God calls us to do something if we're serious about following Jesus. So how are you going to respond? To become generous, I think, starts by realising just how much has been given to us through Jesus. Here's what the Apostle Paul taught. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. To rebuild our community, we need to be people who are generous. We need to be people who have discovered how much God has given us that he gave his only son so that we might have eternal life, that he's given us blessing after blessing after blessing. And then as we realise that, we realise that actually in response, we want to give to bless others. So what can be our response today? First, let me ask you to reflect on just how much God has given you. Then you might want to think about giving to our Fin Fund, our Family in Need Fund, where through links with our local schools, we will be able to address local issues of poverty and support families who are struggling. Could you offer practical skills? You know, I would love to create a list of people in the church who are willing to offer DIY help. There are people gradually, and I'm aware of one particular person, who could really do with some help. And wouldn't that be amazing as a church if we could go and bless people in our community who maybe need their garden done and they can't afford to get it dealt with, who maybe need places and rooms painted but can't afford to do that. And by doing that, will it will lift their spirits and enable them to be in a better place. Or do you today need to address issues of hidden poverty in your own life? I sense that sometimes maybe there's pressure in Oundle to feel that you have to keep up, that you have to look wealthy. But underneath, are you actually struggling with debt yourself and poor financial management? Is this the time to admit where you're really at? and to get help. Please come and speak to myself or email me or Stephen and we can signpost you to where you can get help to move out of poverty yourself. So just as Nehemiah dealt with the poverty within his own community, let us become a church that is known for blessing others and giving away the love that God has given us through generosity and bringing justice for the poor. Let's pray. Let's have a moment just to be quiet and to allow God's Spirit to show you what he has challenged you with today. Is it that you need to allow him to show you afresh just how generous a God he's been to you? Is it that you have been blessed and that you could actually give something to our Friends in Need Fund and make a generous offering? Is it that you have DIY skills and you could offer those to bless others who are less fortunate in our community? Or is it that you need to deal with your own issues of debt and get help? Holy Spirit, will you come and minister to each of us now? We thank you for your generous offer and your life that you have given us. Thank you that you're a God that will never outgive us. You pour your blessings into us. As we learn to follow you, Jesus, more closely, will you make us into a generous community that wants to bless those 
within our community who are less fortunate than we are, who wants to create equal opportunities, who wants to address the issues of poverty here, so that all might know you as their generous, loving saviour. Amen. As we pray this morning, we give thanks that you are always listening and that you long for us to come to you with everything that is on our hearts. We pray for our world. Our world is in need of healing and recovering and rebuilding. We pray for all our nations as they face coronavirus and the journey forward from it. We pray for our environment and the urgent need for big changes. We pray for the deep hurt caused by inequality and pray for eyes and hearts to be opened to see where and how we can challenge and erase it. We pray for breakthroughs towards peace in nations divided by war. In all of these issues, help our leaders and our nations and each of us to think of our whole world not just our own countries. May the world share resources and act with love and respect to find a united way forward. Lord of love and justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our ministry team here at St Peter's, for Stephen and Jane, for Annabelle, Martha and all our lay ministers Thank you for their wisdom and their loving leadership. Today we pray for Josh as he is ordained. Thank you for his gifts 
and all that he will bring to our church family. We pray for he and Sally, that they settle well, and pray that we give them an open, loving welcome into our St Peter's family. We pray too for Sarah and Jonathan, whose gifts have blessed our parish with plenty. Bless them today, on this day of their ordination, and hold them as they move to a new church and a new home. We pray that all of them sense your affirming presence as they step out on this new part of their journey with you. Lord of love and justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering all those who have died recently, we give thanks for their lives and for all they brought to the world and those who knew them. We hold in your loving presence their families and all those who mourn them. We pray for all the family of Bobby and all who miss and mourn her. Thank you for a beautiful celebration of her life yesterday. And we pray for all Tony Hayward's family and friends. In a short silence, we hold in our hearts the names of all those we know who are mourning and who need our prayers. May they all know the deep peace of Christ. Lord of love and justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we hold, Lord, in your healing presence, all those who suffer ill health and pain, in body, mind or spirit, and for all those who are caring for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord of love and justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our mission partners, the Robinson family, back in England, that their visit might be a time of fellowship and renewal, building on relationships and inspiring others by the way they serve you and put your love into action with all the children that they welcome and nurture each week. We pray for them at the place of grace while John and Gillian are away. May things run smoothly and may each one of them know your loving presence holding them through the differences there at this time. Lord of love and justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we pray for ourselves, help us to be inspired by Nehemiah, that we will be angered and aggrieved when we encounter injustice. And I pray that we will be stirred into action by that anger. Give us the wisdom to know when and how to act, Lord. And Lord, can we have the perseverance and devotion to the cause that Nehemiah had, so that we can work to make justice, fairness and an abundance of love a reality, not a dream. Loving God, we are here. Choose us to bring good news. Choose us to bring liberty. Choose us to feed hunger. Choose us to bring unity. Choose us to bring love. Amen. And now we will continue in prayer by singing the Lord's Prayer together. And Arundel Primary School are going to lead us as we do this. So let's join with them now and pray together as Jesus taught us. Thank you, Georgina, for leading our intercessions and to Aundor Primary School for leading us in uh, the Lord's Prayer. Well, we're nearly at the end of our service, but um, there are a few notices. And of course, one of those is that this afternoon it is the ordination of Joshua Jackson, our new curate. Do be praying for Josh and for Sally, especially today uh, as they come to be, as Joshua comes to be ordained and um, as Josh begins work with us um, as from tomorrow morning as our new curate. Of course, it's not just uh, Joshua, it's also Jonathan and Sarah Lee who um, went out from St Peter's Church a couple of years ago to begin their training and they're going to be ordained in Peterborough Cathedral too this afternoon. You can join in with this service at four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, you can um, tune in 
via the cathedral's website. Uh, a link was sent out in the newsletter um, earlier this week. Uh, also, you can look on the uh, cathedral's Facebook page and join it live there. So do join in and watch. Um, numbers of uh, guests at the service are very limited because of COVID, but we can all join in and watch online. So um, do do that later on this afternoon. Um, I'll be there to support Josh as he comes to be ordained, representing the church family and also representing St. Peter's as we come to celebrate with um, Jonathan and Sarah. So that's at four o'clock. At five o'clock, there's our hour of power on Zoom. So do tune in for that straight after and join in as Annabelle leads us in um, praying for lots of different aspects of um, church life and wider life in um, our country. There's some other really important things happening this week. On Thursday evening, we're having a service of remembering. Uh, lots of um, us and lots of people in our community have lost those who they love over the past 18 months or so. If that's you, or if you know someone uh, for whom that's true, um, you are very warmly invited to come to a service on Thursday evening of remembering. And at that service, we will name um, out loud each of the people that we're remembering and we'll give thanks for them. And we'll light a candle as we remember them and commend them into God's safekeeping. It's a very beautiful uh, uh, service, uh, one in which um, we pray that God's sense of comfort and hope and love will be tangibly present. So do come along and do invite anybody else that you know of um, who would like to be there to come. There's one caveat to that. We just need to know numbers because obviously with COVID we have an upper limit. So do um, either uh, register through Church Suite in the normal way or if um, it's somebody in our community who's not on Church Suite but would like to come, they just need to respond with tickets at giving details of who would like to come. If we reach the upper limit that's safe for COVID by our risk assessment and we've got more people coming than we can accommodate at a single service, we will put on another service again. We want to make sure that everybody who would feel they would benefit from remembering a loved one in that way is able to come. So please spread the word and just make sure that people tell us that they want to come. So that's Thursday evening. And then um, as from next Monday, so a week tomorrow, uh, in church all week are going to be some stations, um, prayer stations and uh, response stations to help people reflect on um, how this past a year has been. Lots of us in different ways have experienced loss. Uh, the remembering service will be thinking about bereavement, but there have been lots of other kinds of loss as well. And um, the idea of these stations, which will be in church all week, is to help people to reflect on that loss, to express that and bring that to God, and also to ask his help as we seek to move on um, in our lives and to um, see what God has for us next. So do come um, and use those prayer stations. Look at the notices um, in the newsletter um, and um, do make use of that all of next week and spread the word as always. Immediately after this service, um, there will be Zoom coffee. So it'd be lovely to join together for that. Do read your newsletter carefully for all the different um, invitations and opportunities to help that are in there. We'd love to hear from you, uh, whether it's for Chatterbox um, or other things that we're needing help with. So we're going to sing again and we're going to join together in the usual way as we sing to God be the glory. Let's worship God together. Thank you. 
great to be able to worship together as we sing God's praise. Well, before our final blessing, one other notice that I forgot to give, and that is all about next Sunday. Next Sunday, July begins, and our plan through July is to have a 10.30 service each Sunday outside, weather permitting, in the churchyard as we have um, got used to. So we're looking forward to that next Sunday. In addition, next weekend, we're looking forward to being joined by John and Gillian Robinson, our mission partners from Bangkok in Thailand, where they oversee the um, running of the Place of Grace. We're really looking forward to hearing their news, to hearing more about their ministry, and uh, they're always a blessing whenever they join us. So do come along next Sunday for the service and look out for the other events happening next um, next weekend, including on the Saturday, these different opportunities to meet with John and Gillian. So um, that's a, a wonderful opportunity next weekend. So let's pray together. The Collect for this Sunday. Heavenly Father, you are the comfort of the afflicted and the healer of the broken. Through the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. So draw us into harmony with your will. Teach us your ways of gentleness and peace, that we may find all things restored in Jesus and all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your son. Amen. So may Jesus, the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock with one fold and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. And let's share the peace together. Christ is our peace and he's reconciled us to God by one body on the cross. We gather in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to respond and also with you. Why not just pop a message of peace to the rest of the church family on the chat and I look forward to seeing you in a few moments for Zoom coffee.